Record of Fugitives, April 1856, from the papers of Sidney Howard Gay, read by Frank Blissett. April 2nd, Rebecca Jones and three children from Norfolk, Virginia, sister of Isaiah Robinson, March 25th, and belonged to the same mistress, who died abroad when making preparations to free her slaves. Since her death they have hired their time, and the estate has remained unsettled. Recently two of her brothers and a sister were sold, and she had reason to suppose that she and her children would follow. Came on the vessel to Wilmington with others. See March 27th. Sent to Boston. $7.50. Caroline Taylor and two daughters from Norfolk came on with Daniel Robinson. March 27th. Belonged to Peter March, 57 Front Street, New York. Her husband is a free man, now at sea, in U.S. steamer Saranac. Caroline has lived with Mrs. Ott, her master's mother, but has hired her time, last year for eight dollars, and taken in washing. Many of her master's relatives having died last year of yellow fever, he determined to sell his slaves, which Caroline determined that, so far as the other children were concerned, he should not. The appraisal of the three was $1,800, took passage on the same vessel with Robinson, and paid $100, drawing the money from the Navy agent on her husband's order. Her younger girl, nine years, was dressed as a boy. Sent to New Bedford, where she has a sister. Ten dollars, fifty cents. April 4th. James Jones, thirty-one years old, from Alexandria, Virginia. Left on Friday night last, March 28th, in a schooner for Baltimore. A friend of the captain of the vessel concealed him there in a freight car and let him out at Wilmington. Paid the captain two dollars forty cents. Dr. William Stewart was master. Had not been treated badly, but was tired of being a slave. His mother ran away four years ago and went to New Bedford. Sent to Syracuse. Four dollars fifty cents. Thomas Henry Matthews, now calls himself Louis Lee, 25 years, came off with five others, four men and one woman, from Prince George's County, Maryland, near Bladensburg. Ethan A. Jones, his master, started Easter Saturday, walked on towards Harrisburg under the guidance of a free-colored man of Washington. Joseph Beckett, traveled by night and hid in the day. The guide left them on Wednesday near the Pennsylvania line, each of them having paid him ten dollars. Arrived at William Wright's, twenty miles from Harrisburg, on Friday. Here Thomas left the party, went to Dr. Rutherford, Harrisburg, who sent him to a colored man, who forwarded him to Philadelphia. Says he was worked as a slave, and had not even enough to eat. A reward of three hundred dollars has been offered for him in the Baltimore Sun. Sent to Syracuse. Four dollars, fifty cents. April 7th. Otho Taylor, wife, and two children. One at the breast. He belonged to Henry Fiery, she and the children to John S. Fiery, both living near Clear Spring, Maryland, seven miles from the Pennsylvania line. There were eight altogether in the company who filled two carriages. When near Chambersburg, one of the carriages broke down. 
Otho put his wife and one child on the horse, and his brother took the others, put up the horse in Chambersburg, and engaged a man to get and repair the carriage, took the cars for Philadelphia, but saw two men at the depot who they knew were in pursuit. Otho's master was also seen in Philadelphia a few days later, no doubt looking for them. Sent to Syracuse, $11. April 9th. Charles Hall belonged to Atwood Blunt of Baltimore County, Maryland, about 14 miles above Baltimore. His master undertook to whip him for some alleged fault, which Charles resisted. He was then handcuffed and confined to an upper room in the house, to be taken next day to Baltimore to be sold. He contrived to tear up the hearth and break into the room below, from which, being unlocked, he escaped, walked to Baltimore that night, still handcuffed, and went to the house of a friend who received and concealed him for three days, then walked to Pennsylvania. James Johnson of Deer Creek, Maryland, William Rambley, Master, left on Friday the 4th. His master had threatened to sell him, sent them both to Syracuse, $8.50. April 11th. Three men arrived from Philadelphia Station of the same party with Matthews on April 4th. George Ellis Logan, belonging to Sarah Jane Costin, and John William Logan, cousins, belonging to Nancy Cox, all of Berkeley County, Virginia, near Georgetown. They report that Fiery has been obliged to give up working his farm as his hands have all gone, and that Otho Taylor, April 7th, one of the Fiery's people, had to whip his wife to make her consent to go. The Logans think that she will reckon it was the best whipping she ever had in her life. Sent to Albany, $4.50. With them was Charles Carter of Richmond, Virginia. Daniel Delaplane was his master. He has a wife at Alexandria and four children, slaves of Mr. Cusno, whom he was allowed to go and see occasionally. Had a pass for that purpose at Christmas time, but having heard that his master, alarmed at the frequency of slaves running away, and thinking that this very habit of going to Alexandria might lead Charles to acquire a taste for traveling, had determined to sell him, Charles concluded to indulge his desire to see more of the world at once. He went on to Washington, and has been concealed there all winter. On the journey to Harrisburg he became frostbitten from exposure in their night travels. Sent to New Bedford, where he has friends. He is determined to get his wife and children somehow. Expenses, $4. April 18th. Samuel Hill, born Zebulon Green, from Duck Creek, between Smyrna and Dover, Delaware. Seventeen years old. Master, John Appleton. Left last Sunday night. Walked, by night, to Philadelphia stopped at Chester, Pennsylvania, and was aided by Mr. Murphy. His master worked him hard, clothed him poorly, and beat him. Has a brother at St. Catharines, Canada, who ran away a year ago, and whom he wishes to join. Sent to Albany. $2.25. April 30th. John Williams and Mary, his wife, from Haven Manor, thirteen miles from Elkton, Maryland. Master's name, John Peach. 
ran away last fall, but were caught between Newcastle and Wilmington, taken back, and whipped. Peach said that if they ran away again, he would have em if he had to get to hell for em. He will only, however, have to go to Canada. It is not, to be sure, so far, but the difficulties would probably be greater, as in the other place a slave catcher would be sure of aid and sympathy. They left on the night of the tenth and reached Wilmington before morning and were received by Thomas Garrett, forwarded to Still, who sent them here, sent on to Syracuse, eight dollars fifty cents. That was Record of Fugitives, April 1856, from the papers of Sidney Howard Gay, read by Frank Blissett.